Big Shook, Big Shook. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Welcome to the Yo. Danger Zone Podcast, episode 56. Five, six. You know big, what I mean? We hit Lawrence, Lawrence, Taylor, Lawrence Taylor jersey. Uh, we got Big Show got a private location again this week. Uh, no question. We got Welcome some back. NFL superstars stopping by the show today. Yeah, talk, legend. Talk Patriots, about, uh, Patriots. You know, talk Patriots, about legend. Super Bowl Proof. history and all that shit. So what you got going on, Big Show? I'm trying to, you know. What about me? I'm I didn't get to say Chef Tommy. Oh, before. Chef, I didn't say my name. Wow. He f- in his feelings that cut me off. I'm in my feelings because uh, I feel like I feel like people might hit on you in the future, <laughs> and I don't I don't want it to happen. So yo. you don't want nah. it to happen. Oh, now you a what, hater. Hey, ladies, be picking him up in the grocery store. What, I'll be giving him you, his ups. Hey, what do you mean? What do you? What about Rod? Oh, he hasn't been hitting on, hitting on her. Lately. He left me. He ghosted. <laughs> he ghosted me. Your boy Rod. No goodbye. No Yo, nothing. Anyway. That's okay. Yo, so, I'm doing better and fine without hey, you. <laughs> just this. Just this week, your boy. Uh oh. Little Nas X. Oh jeez. Or should we say Little Nas X? He was sued for a million dollars because uh, they had a party. Um, at a mansion, you know, these people rent out promoters, uh, yeah, yeah. rent out from it's like a venue, he's yeah, and then, then invite him and probably pay, pay some cash. But, um, him and the along with uh, the producer Zed, I guess that's the dude that does music with him in a promoter, they were sued, um, a million dollars. They supposedly trashed the joint, you know, went crazy in there. So it's just a brief story. Uh, we don't even need to get into it deep, but like as we stand now, your boy's old country road, <laughs> old country road is getting sued for a million dollars. Good luck to your boy. Damn. You know what I'm saying? What kind of Bozy damage did you do? That That's a lot uh, of money. I said, what kind of damage did he do? You know they do that stupid shit. You know, my was probably peeing in the fireplace. Oh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck it. Dumb shit, like you know what I'm saying. Yo, I was too bad for whoever has to clean up after them. Fucking, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what, and that's the worst. Like when we did the video, X Girl, the Next Girl, um, Gangstar, we were in this mansion, and that's when I first started realizing, like, oh shit, they be renting these shits out, you know. And dude, but dude was walking around everywhere. We was that dude was basically following us all around and shit. I'm like, yeah, all right, man. You know, we we know this is your friend. You know what I'm saying? So we're not gonna but, take um, nothing back off. Yeah, so you know, we, we, we see what happens with them. Also, another thing that happened is Buster Rhymes was walking through an airport. <laughs> oh my God. Buster. And, and this woman came up and thought she could caress his cakes. What? So she, she walked up behind him and she grabbed his ass. So what he did was threw his drink on him. Splash, right? So now, think about it. They don't know what made her feel so comfortable that she could. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Grab his ass, you know what I'm saying? Maybe um, he got a juicy one, and she was like, "Whatever it takes, he, I'm in." <laughs> well, he spl- he splashed her, but you have to think about it too, though, um, because if that if a man does that, then we're like in the Me Too moment. You see what well, I'm technically, it's you assault. Know? Oh my god! No, it is. It's the same thing. So he he did what he did. He kept it moving, but I mean, people just don't know. You can't just go out and just grab motherfuckers like that, anyway. Um, you know, so Bust did what he had to do. You know, it is what it is. You know, he kept it moving. What's good with you, D? Uh, oh, nothing, man. Just, uh, um, I don't know if something's going on with the microphone here. I don't know what's going on. but uh, Well, I know there's a lot of air in and a lot of air out. Um, let's talk about the 50 greatest rappers of all time. What do you think? The 50? You saw the list? What'd you think? You saw the list? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> So, we got 50 Cent, we got Reverend Run, Melly Mel. We got a bunch of people on there. There's no one on there that I really... There's no one that wouldn't be my list, but there's no one on the list that I was really like, this guy shouldn't be on the list. The closest person to me was Common. That was the closest to me. Closest that shouldn't be on there? Yeah, I don't think he shouldn't be on there, but if I had to say, like, like he, if I had to move him for someone, I, I would have picked him first, you know what I mean? Or maybe like Melly Mel is. 
And it, well, you know, if you think about it, though, when you see certain of those rappers, um, if you see certain ones, you know that a part of their pick was because of where they came and what they did for the culture and the history. Because yeah. you think of uh, Run DMC, it was a more simplified cadence, you know, but we was all riding on it when it came out. It was all, that was what we knew, like in the forefront. It was all, that was what we knew, like in the forefront. You know, then it got more intricate, you know, with the Big Daddy Kings and the uh, Rock Cams and Melly Mel. Now think about it, Melly Mel was storytelling and they had some joints, but he was talking about free basing. He had a song called White Lines. I'm just talking about yeah. how you think about the great things. He, White Lines, when, when that came out, we didn't even know what the hell he was talking about. We thought when he said bass, we thought he talking about do doom do doom do doom do Right, that's what we think. And then I found out, you know, years later when the ep epidemic hit, right, that when that hit, then I was like, oh, these motherfuckers are talking about free base and way the fuck back then. So, I mean, I think it's some of those guys were picked because of where they came and what they did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For the in the culture of it. Because you're not going to sit there and say, Melly Mel is the same type of rapper as like, like a JC in greatness or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. what he did was great. Because exactly. <laughs> when you didn't have nothing else to say back in the day, it was a rough. That's it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you, you you finished it off like that. So, so there's a few. Did you like the show? I thought the list was okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the list. I, I you know, everyone was up in a uh, whirlwind about it. I read it and I, I didn't hate it. I, I thought some of the placements were weird, but there was, like I said, there was no one that I was like, oh, this guy shouldn't be on this fucking list. There, there wasn't anyone that uh, that came to mind really. Um, the Who's couple, your number one? Who's your number one? My favorite or the person I think, like I, I say, uh, 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 objectively, uh, me, uh, Buster Rhymes. Yeah. Buster Rhymes. Okay. Um, so who objective, was objectively, Jay Z. Who's the, who's number one on on that list? Jay Z. Oh yeah, okay. Well, I don't I don't argue Jay Z that being the best. I, I think I think if there's a right answer, Jay Z is the best. But he's not I my he's not my favorite. Like Buster Rhymes, all, all time Buster Rhymes, Ice Cube, you know Cypress Hill. That that's that's my shit. You know. You know, like my all time my all time number one was Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Biggie yeah. was just. I mean, this motherfucker just to me, he um, he just rhymed about shit that was just the, even the flows he had, and then certain things making shit sound intricate, like you know what I'm saying, like like I like when you listen to that song he had just um, uh, I got a story to tell. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That shit you like really like right like, you really um uh, ride right through that like man this motherfucker's like you know what I'm saying you felt his song but he was so fly with it a fat dude yeah. and he made fat dude. It was fly as hell, but it, but Jay Z is 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 right there too. Nas, all of them in that circle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, the movement rappers, like Buster too. He's another one for me because I feel like he's just he he's dope. Like Buster's dope. You know what I mean? But then there's so there's so many man. He's, though, in, a, he's like in the 30s though. Tony's Ty, looking for those. He's like in the 30s though. Buster, like, you can't tell me there's 30 rappers better than Buster Rhymes. Nah. You, you, you can't, oh hell you know no! I mean? You know what I mean? You can't. No. Tell me. Like he, he don't have to be your favorite or. I don't care if he's not your favorite, but but I'm saying like there's not 30 rappers better than him. You no, can't you can't really show me one rapper that did a better verse than him when they did song together. Nope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even uh, Biggie, who's considered you know Biggie, he's fucking Biggie, considered the goat by many. And when you hear mm -hmm. Victory, when you you hear the song Victory, you you think of that Buster Rhymes hook. You know? Like, I mean, I just to me personally, like I never heard a song from. Uh, no, I was just that I surprised that they put Ludacris above Dr. J. Yeah. Let's get some. Let's get. Let's, why don't you run the list? They, put, they, put, they put Ludacris so, above who? Dr. J. But he should be though. I don't think Dr. Dre should be on that li the list necessarily. That's what I mean. Um, but start, That's what let's I start, mean. start from number fifty, Chef Tony. Start number fifty cent. I mean, uh, Rick Ross. But number hold 50 on one is second. Rick Ross. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chef. One second though. First of all, some t some t was like what I was talking about—the culture and the movement. So I think Dr. Dre is one of them rappers. Like, with, it, it was a certain time for the movement. Um, Rick Ross wouldn't be on my greatest top 50, but go ahead. Okay, go ahead. You? 50? You? Uh, are we talking... All right, when, when, before we start talking about this list, are we talking our 50 favorites, or are we talking 50 for the for what they did for the culture? Because I hate to say it, yeah, no, he, he kind of did, did it for the culture. I'm he saying, no, for you, that could be your... Nah, your he's, not, he's not on mine, no. 
I don't, I like, I'm looking at this list and I'm saying, no, nah, I wouldn't have him on there. But go uh, ahead. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. We won't, we, won't yeah. take it, we won't take it personally. We'll just say if they belong yeah. there or not. Yeah. Yeah. So to me. 50 is Rick Ross. Yeah, Rick Ross. Yeah, I don't 49 think 49 so. is Rev Run, Run DMC. Run, Run belongs there, but but I don't know why yeah. D DMC's not there. But w whatever. Do you think D I think DMC was better? I don't know. That's just me. Uh, see, I feel the opposite. Okay. You know what I mean? He was cool the day. He was, cool the day. <laughs> he, was look, he was more amp too. Like, see, see, remember Run D remember DMC used to do a lot of the reverb. I'm not going up, God, 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 God. You say that's how his lines were. But the it rampage, rampage took that. Yeah. Forty-eight. What's that? Melly Mel. Melly Mel, forty-eight. I said rampage kind of took that be, style. Yeah. Yeah, he could be on it because that's part of like that's like a culture move. But go ahead. Forty-seven. MC Light. MC Light, forty-seven. Yeah, she's, she's another movement. Yeah, yeah she could be on it. Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're, yeah, but they're saying Jada Kiss is the forty-sixth best rapper. I don't know if that. Nah, he, he's but, not on my ten, but he. I don't think forty six. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, he, I don't agree with that either. <laughs> forty five. Ice T. Ice T. Who? Who? I. I love. I love Ice T. But this. This is where it is. It's like he's so. He. he for what he did for the culture, he should be there. He's a move. He's a movement rapper, but he to me he's not like as a rapper. He, he did like an interview. That. He did an interview one time, and they say, Ice. They say, Ice T. You say you're the world's, the world's biggest hustler. Why you say that? Why you think you're the world's mm -hmm. biggest hustler? And he goes, because I sold millions of records and I can't even rap. And I was like, oh, one, <laughs> one, one time he opened my eyes to something. Me and Guru were at it. And, and he played something for us. No, his hotel room. He played something for us. And we just sitting there, you know, when someone plays something, and you're like, oh. Right, and then he starts explaining like what what he meant when he said something, yeah. and that's to me that's what I'm saying. When you start explaining your rhymes, well, I'm like, yeah, he, he might have been explaining West Coast terminology. No, we knew that we we had oh. been around. Yeah, like, but he might not known you know that though. Trust me, DL. He knew we knew that. He just knew that we didn't re we didn't react to the line that he thought was dope. Oh, okay. You see what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't so there, so I, I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, and I'm saying we're sitting there, and then he's like, "So when I said that, I mean for this to be like this." Like he was like, "Oh, okay," but yeah, I wouldn't have him there. But go ahead. So I think we lost it here, but I believe the next one was Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. I, I, I put it there. She should be on. She should be on there, even though a few people wrote some rhymes for her. But yeah, it is what it is. Culture. But she also did a lot for the culture. Yeah, but a lot of these people on this list got female. rhymes written for them. Like Fifty Cent wrote rhymes for LL oh, Cool J. That shit was like, oh, broke my heart. You feel? Of course. So, uh, who, Go ahead. who was that we got? Um, Hold on. Sorry, sorry. We're, we're at Queen Latifah. I, I, I'll give it 43 to 43 is Bun B. Bun B. What do you think? Bun yeah. B? I like Bun he B, wouldn't but be there. 50? He nah. wouldn't be there. 50? He wouldn't be there for Not me. Not for me but either, no. But I like Bun B. I don't think he's whack, but I don't think he would be there for me. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Excuse me. What that Hello? I'm oh, sorry. We're no, looking at this. They got just... every, everything on the internet is just full of ads. I just saw um, So, Bun B, yeah. I, I, I'm a fan of Bun B. Um, oh, Dude, but I wouldn't have. Hold on. Okay, so forty-two is Red Man. Red Man for sure, but yeah, he, he can't yeah. tell me there's forty-one better rappers than Red Man. That's where I no. think, you know, like he's on my top ten. No. Phone died. Oh, the phone died. Forty-one was E forty. So yeah, her no. her phone died, so we can't go through the rest of them. But <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> uh, you can't do it on your. No, because it was making this shit run slow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just thought the list was crazy. The, oh, here we go, right here. But uh, like, th like I said, there's there's so many ads. I'm gonna try to um, try to try to do this. What did you think about who was the last one? Redman. Redman's on my top ten. So yeah. when, when I saw yeah. when I saw him there, I was I was happy for sure. But um, I want to know y'all. I want to know where y'all do that show at. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get up on here and share. No, I can't do that. Um, Yo. Um, what else we good? But yeah, I saw everybody freaking out about it because you know their favorite rapper wasn't on this part or that part. But um, I'm trying to I'm trying to do it because oh here we go. Let's just I, go let's just go through it. Number forty two, Red Man. Number forty one, E forty. Culture, yeah. West Coast. He made so much money out there doing his thing, and he, so he's a movement. Yeah, I put him on there for that. I never really liked the style, but. Number that, I mean. number forty, Dr. Dre. We we talked about you know his relevance for yeah. sure. He he brought us some of the biggest yeah. rappers of all time. Right. But like you're saying, we all know right. if someone wrote your rhymes. Uh, Ludacris. Jay Z. Ludacris. Ludacris. Number thirty nine. No, I think I think Ludacris is dope. Ludacris is dope. 
Yeah, Ludacris I thought was like the new Red Man, and I liked him. Uh, Gucci Mane. I think I think he's nah. he, he definitely um I, I think he should be there for one reason. Like if we're talking relevance, he really changed how a lot of people rap. Yeah. And, you know my, mind you, mind you, I don't look at him as being whack or nothing. I just would say where I would put I don't know if I'd have him on that fifty list, but go ahead. Alright, thirty seven common. We already talked Yeah, about I'd that. have common. I like common. Yes, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have common and it's not even because of what happened that night in Miami and just like I just wouldn't have him on there. No, nah, that's my <laughs> Number dude. Number thirty six Formerly most deaf. Yeah, most deaf. Yasin. He's Jay. dope. I don't know if he's on my fifty. He's, he's he's good. I don't know if he's on my. He's 50. dope. He's definitely not on my Go fifty. Ahead. What am I talking about? Uh, future number thirty-five. Nah, out of there, boom. That's just some shit they put on there because because he's the man. He's the dude now, but <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Molly's and Percocets, whatever, man. <laughs> what? That's his joint, Molly's and Percocets. Yeah, that's one of them that blew. That um, shit blew. <clears throat> next one, Chuck D, Public Enemy. Hundred percent. Hell yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll scratch my feet again. But <laughs> yo, pass the weed again. Oh, I ain't there. Two weeks in a row, I ain't get to get no pre rolls. Damn. Thirty three. Buster Rhymes. You can't tell me there's thirty two rappers Buster. better than Buster Rhymes. Hundred percent. Right no, Buster true. in there. T I number thirty two. This person who wrote this T. article. This person who wrote this article says T I is better than Buster Rhymes, and we're gonna stop right there because the rest of this shit is ridiculous. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey, I just to me, to me, I think Ti is good though. I do, but he's not better than Bust. But I think he's good. So you know, the he list is crazy. Ahead. Everybody has their opinions. Um, but what else? What else happened this week, Big Shook? I mean, like you know, I, I you know a few things might have happened. But if if I can, I could jump off of hip hop real quick. Yeah. And I just want to a shout out to. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and the um, Kansas City Chiefs for winning the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So I know Maria picked uh, Kansas City. Who else did you? I did. I'm the, and, I'm the official. We tied as picks. Me and you. We had the same amount of wins and losses this season. But I won the Super Bowl. So I crowned myself <laughs> season one. He won the Super I'm the Bowl. Man. Super Bowl winner. <laughs> I'm the I'm the man. Shot. I'm the man. Shot. But no, no. Um, it was it was good. It was fun. It was a uh, Maria. Nobody Maria remembers loving. the season. They remember the Super Bowl, though. Yeah. And, and one thing about it, one thing about it is, uh, congratulations to Kansas City Chiefs Hell yeah. because you know Patrick Mahomes won uh, in five years. He's won two Super Bowls and it's been his AFC Championship game every year. Um, mm -hmm. It's amazing feat. Uh, people get their their. Uh, like they like to say panties in a bunch in New England because they feel like, oh, here's somebody uh, might catch catch up to Brady. Well, that's so much off the radar. Like it's so, and so why far away. on him because he might. So if he does. Well, because, so because the reason why people do it is because it's New England. And that's who they ride with. They I, 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 I know it's coming. Yeah, absolutely. I know but where from. Look, we're celebrating Tom Brady right now too. Like he's retiring. But, the man's amazing. But, it's, but listen to this. You're always going to measure something against greatness. Tom Brady has done something that someone most likely won't do. I mean, if I see somebody get seven Super Bowls or even six or even five, right? Because there's a bunch of guys that got two and was like, you know, boom. But so I'm, I'm congratulating him for that, even though Jalen Hurts had the better game. Jalen Hurts was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, they didn't lose the game because of Jalen Hurts. He, if they won the game, he would have been the MVP. He was that. He threw some passes. He ran. He scored three touchdowns. He was something else. So all those people, they say, "Well, he got it's because he has weapons around him and certain things." No, that boy, he played. So shout out to both of the teams. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. great. It was. Yeah, they both look good. It was a great Super Bowl. I, I like. I like. It everything was. It was entertaining. We were both it was for, for different teams. Like, it was, I, it was I watched the whole thing from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, no, it I was. Mean, yeah, maybe. It, what do you mean? Yeah, maybe. No, I did. It was entertaining though, so that that was that was the key factor on that. Um, as far as um, you know, we we got that great interview and whatever, and uh, you know, that's about it on me on the on, yeah. on the. Um, so big shook. Did you like the Rihanna halftime show? Um, I I thought it was cool. First of all, I thought it was cool. <coughs> I liked it. Shout out to um Shaquan. Uh, he was one of the dancers in the sperm suits. No, those those white suits they had on. The Oompa Loompas. Like the little, whatever they, they look like a whole bunch of Pillsbury people, yeah. but not nah, shout out to Shaquan. 
Shaquan Reed, that's a, a friend of uh, a friend of um, me. It's uh, her son, and he's um, a friend of family actually. And, and her son's one of the dancers. He's danced with Chris Brown, and everybody, man. It, I thought that was dope, but it was dope to watch it. Actually, I was most impressed. Uh, I think his name, last name is Stapleton. We, I, I got to look him up. Yeah, yeah, the, the, singer, the guy yeah. The band, at the beginning of the game with the long hair and yeah, um, Chris Stapleton. Man, he was so soulful, man. The, the dude was dope, man. I loved it. You know, so I enjoyed. I enjoyed that him singing. Um, what one? What did he sing? Was the it national anthem? Did he sing the national anthem or the or the other one? Or Babyface sang the um, one Star, joint? That's Star right. Star Spangled Yo, it was dope. That boy was dope, man. I, I give it to him. I think his last name was Stapleton. Yeah, yeah. But I enjoyed that. I didn't watch the whole halftime thing because at this time when I was watching the Super Bowl, so I was frying chicken wings. <laughs> Yum. I was making uh, rice. During halftime, I was, like, I, I, was, well, I was doing it like through the game. It was so a continuous thing. I finished it. Yeah, you know. So I was eating like little, you know, stuff ahead of time. But I, I did that, and I could see it. You know, we got the, you got the big TV right there. You know, with sheep in the kitchen. But halftime with me, it's like the Grammys. I watch a little something, you know, and maybe I won't like, you know, I, like even with Doc and all them. I didn't watch that whole thing and the commercials. I uh, usually super dope, but they were kind of whack this year. I like some of them. You know, I like the the uh, uh, what was the one that we laughed at? The Ben Affleck one I laughed at. Yeah, the Dunkin' Donuts one. Um, the, I didn't those, see that. J Lo and Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck was like working the window at Dunkin' Donuts, and they had real reactions yeah, he was from working people. Working it. Oh my god. He was <laughs> like, I don't know what the bagel button is. I was like, don't worry, baby. So um, I thought when I was watching it, I, I was like, damn, Rihanna's tied to that thing. But she is not afraid of heights. Let me tell you, yeah, because she's so. fucking, she's fucking up there, floating on, like relying on man-made cables. She's up, she knows. But you know what? Yeah. We have no idea from what we can see. We have no idea <clears throat> of how many cables there actually are. Yeah, yeah, right there now, was at least there. eight. There was at least no, eight. She was high up there. Was two on even each. the dancers, I was giving props to the dancers. They were some of them were even higher than her. Like that she was, was at the crazy. end when they when they raised her up at the end, she was uh, she was uh, she, she was, was fucking a hundred something feet in the air, easily two hundred feet in the air probably. I was always I was always uh, I always think that it's dope uh, the, the synchronized dancing anyway. You know what I mean? So that's that part of it. Like she didn't have to do much. I, mean, I guess she was pregnant. She's pregnant again. Um, so you know she still was able to like rock. It still was entertaining. You know what I mean? Um, you know, but uh, overall, like, it was an entertaining game, halftime, and people are going to hate and say different things because they can't, because they were they were afforded social media. So they, instead of before, you could just yell and tell people in the house that you're in, you want to tell the whole world. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what, that's what it's created for. So, you know, whatever, but I enjoyed it. What's going on, man? Hey, oh, long time. How you doing? I know. Hey, listen, right? That's a, that's a nice shirt choice. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> we was we was on the same page. You know what I'm saying? We we got to support him after this past season. We got to got to take him into the season right this year. Oh man, I, I, that's crazy because I thought maybe it was just the I thought it was the gap to telepathy that we got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I got one. Too. I was like, I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Nah, but you know, um, are we ready there, DL? Oh, yeah, we're here. We're on the Danger Zone podcast, number 56. Welcome, everybody. So 56 uh, with Big Show. Mr. DL. And Chef Tanya Nicole. Thank you for joining us. And today, we got this uh, special guest, man. You know, I like to say, even for the time that you're in New England, I would like to say, um, to me, a, a former legend, even just because... Legend just because of playing in that first Super Bowl and former NFL player Garen Veris. Thank you for being here today, brother. Hey, big show. It's a it's a honor and a, a pleasure, that's for sure. Mm hmm So so what we want to do, first and foremost, I mean, I know a lot about you and, and accomplishments, but can you just give like a, a, a short uh, a backstory? So for those who don't, you know what I'm saying, uh uh you know, know Garen Barris, you know, and, 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 you know, just how he came about and, you, 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 you know, what brought you, you know, to the NFL and such a, you know, little story for us, you know? Absolutely. No, I, I'm uh, here in Ohio now. I, I grew up in a uh, 
small town here in Ohio, uh, Chillicothe. And uh, it's about an hour south of here in Columbus. But um, grew up here and uh, I've been playing on you know any sport that you can imagine that uh, it was always a, a priority for me to to uh, to play sports I in high school uh, played basketball uh, played football of course and also uh, uh, participate on the track team I threw the shot put and discus so did but, I um, that's cool yeah, yeah. I to, through through uh, in high school I actually had four state championships in the uh, two in the shot put, two in the discus, and um, mm. it it allowed me, along with my football career in high school, to uh, be recruited by a lot of schools coming out of high school. And mm. um, I was probably set on going to Michigan uh, before uh, Stanford came in at the last minute. So I said, ah, what the heck, I'm going to take a trip out to California just to see what the coast is like, mm. and uh, went out there and just absolutely loved it. And uh, so I packed my bags and uh, traveled about uh, 2,500 miles out to Stanford in, in uh, uh, California and ended up being a great choice. I was able to, to uh, participate on the track team for two years, mm-hmm. get a great education, play football, uh, ended up, uh, we never had a winning season at Stanford. It's amazing. I, I never had a winning season in uh, yeah. junior high school, never had a winning team in uh, oh, high geez. school. Oh. Never had a winning team in college. Oh, jeez. Um, then wow. I get uh, get drafted by the Patriots right. in uh, 1985. And uh, a, a story about about that that I'd, I heard after the fact, but uh, I ended up being chosen in the second round. But uh, the Patriots had originally had uh, a first-round pick, mm-hmm. and they had the number 16 choice, and they – they Who was that? Traded. Well, they trade. Here's the story. They traded San Francisco for that pick at mm. 16 in the first round. But San Francisco, uh, they were actually uh, going to take me in the first round with the last pick because they had just won the Super Bowl the year before. Right. And, um, but they tr- they got the Patriots' 16th choice in the first round. Mm. And here's a here's a question for you: Who did San Francisco pick with that 16th pick in the first round? Wow, that's a tough one. So that's 85? 85. So uh, let me just get, was, what did he be, did it become a uh, uh, major I'm not player? Ta- I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Jerry, oh, Jerry Rice. Oh, hold on Jerry, now. What, Jerry what, Rice, he got it. Oh, Jerry? Yeah. Jerry Rice. Jerry Man, Rice. Jerry Rice take, so they took him. I'm, so I'm the they Super took Bowl him instead of me in the first round. And so uh, <laughs> I, I always tell people, I, Jerry, Jerry owes me a lot of money because uh, uh, they, 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 San Francisco moved up to get him at number 16. So, wow. but, um, but that's a, a, a story I heard after the fact, and it would have been great to play with San Francisco, but I think they, they did a pretty good, uh, made a pretty okay. good choice. In, in let, let me ask there. you a question. Just, you know, hold the track for a minute. So when you were in high school though, because you know, a lot of people, you know, I've dealt with a lot of uh, football players and, and family and, you know, guys that are still playing now and, and stuff. And, uh, what, when you were in high school, did you? What did you play in football? Like you played uh, multiple positions, or I was I was a uh, my sophomore year I was an offensive lineman, and okay. uh, I, you know I was you know pretty athletic, and I was like going, man, I don't want to play offense. I this offensive yeah. line, you know, I, yeah. I think that uh, I wanted to be around creating some havoc and <laughs> right. some passes and. Uh, right. Scoring right. touchdowns, but the, uh, my junior year, they moved me uh, to tight end, mm-hmm. and I played tight end my junior and senior year. And on, on defense, I played uh, defensive end. Mm-hmm. So, um, but when I got recruited out of high school, I was primarily I was probably I was in the top two or three tight ends in the country. Oh, uh, being recruited out of right. high school, and um, so Ohio, the only school that was recruiting me as a, a defensive player, well, actually at the time, was Ohio State. And um, I didn't, you know, the defense wasn't on my my radar. I really wanted to play tight end, and that's the position that, uh, you know, everybody else felt I was. So, um, but anyway, I went to Stanford as a tight end, mm-hmm. and uh, you of course know who was our quarterback when I was went to Stanford as a tight end, right? Um, hold on now. There's another trivia question. But, but I know this, I don't know. This, <laughs> I, 
I know you're not. Well, you played in '85, so it couldn't have been who I who Come I want to miss. You know, you know, you know the greatest Stanford quarterback in history, and probably might be the best quarterback in NFL history to some people. Oh, to some people in the history? Yeah. Man, that's a good one, man. That's a good one. Because only Stanford. Uh, I, I might here, be here. Denver Broncos. Oh, you're right, John Elway. You're right. You're right. Damn. There you go. Oh, wow. so did <laughs> yo yo did but did Plunky go to Stanford as well? Yeah, Stan, Plunkett went, uh, he was about 70, 70 and 71. Oh, yeah, I know he was before you. Yeah. But, but I, I know that he went on to do some great things. But, yeah, you but come on, John. I, yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. And shout out to you wanted to go to Michigan. I want to shout my nephew out who plays for Michigan. Yep. Um, TJ Guy. Uh, he actually plays on the edge. Um, he's yeah, getting was- yeah, he's getting a little bit of run. You know, he's he's a, he's a sophomore, so um, you know they expect some things out of him. But you know, I just you spoke of well, Michigan. Well, you know, it's like being here in Columbus, Ohio. This you know the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. There, there is another no bigger rivalry in college football. I, Alabama, oh, yeah. Auburn, it, but Ohio State Michigan is it's a it's an incredible rivalry. And uh, when when that game is coming up, I mean, it's nobody does anything else but uh, focus in on that game. Oh, no question. I'm I, I'm gonna and actually this year coming up, all things come together. I'm gonna try to go to that one. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm always supporting them. But uh, you know, I, I I like to see that. You know, um, it's funny when I was a kid, uh, I wanted to be a Michigan uh, Wolverine, and Bo Schembeck was the coach. Um, yeah. You know, I I peeped the age. Uh, this might be one of them shows where, where I actually might be older than you. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but uh, so Bo Schimbeck was coach, and I was like in the third or fourth grade. So I wanted to play football, and I, I studied and learned what um, Wolverine was. Because I was like, what the hell is a Wolverine like? You know what I mean? I'm a little kid. So then I learned, and I was like, man, I really want to go to Michigan. And, you know, play ball and went through my stuff. And then when I um, – that was one of the recruits for my son – Shout out to Tremaine. And then uh, my nephew ended up going there, and I was like, wow, that was something else. So, you know, the beat goes on. But um, that uh, one great so thing. You said, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. You no, said- I, was, I was just going to say that uh, the, um, you know, I grew up a, a Buckeye. So, I mean, it was just amazing. It, it would have been, I wouldn't have been able to come home if I'd have gone to Michigan and grew up a Buckeye. Uh, oh, gee. Oh, it, gee. It I, I, I had a lot of friends that you know they were really upset at me that uh, I didn't go to go to Ohio State and and uh, you know a lot of people I still talk to you know well, you should have gone to Ohio State and I, said, well, I think <laughs> yeah. I did pretty well for myself. <laughs> was Woody was Woody still the coach then? No, Woody had uh, he had gone on to he had, you know had punched that player at Clemson right. during his bowl game right. and he got fired the- and um, yeah. so they had the new coach uh, Earl Bruce was uh, yeah Earl Bruce uh, Okay, I'm, I'm familiar, yeah. Yeah. but you know, I was just saying, man, you said I wouldn't have been able to go back to, uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to go back to your hometown, but shoot, it might have been a little different playing for Woody and them guys, but yeah. we know that was that era, so it was a little different, you know, yeah. street grabbing, you know what I mean? You said, well, you, um, you, said you live in Columbus right now? Yeah, I, I live in Columbus, and, and uh, you know, I'm about five minutes from, from Ohio State in the stadium, and I'm... I'm just around uh, all of the uh, the Buckeyes here. I get a little tired of hearing about them all the time, but I know my sophomore year when I was at Stanford, we went back to Ohio State and uh, we actually beat Ohio State in Ohio State. I had about a hundred family and friends in the stadium, and uh, you want to talk about somebody being happy as hell? That uh, mm. that was that was a big win for us. I was born mm. in I was born in Dayton. What's that like an hour an hour away? Yeah, I was just in Dayton uh, the other day, matter of fact, for a doctor's appointment. How how is it in Ohio right now? Is everyone freaking out about that whole train thing? Or yeah, I mean, it's we don't get so much of it here in Columbus, but uh, you know, we had seventy degree weather today. It set a record. Mm. Uh, mm. So we're very happy with this winter we're having. It it uh, usually you know it's pretty cold. Uh, did you say you grew up in Dayton? No, I was born there. I didn't grow up there though. Yeah. Okay. They they kicked. They kicked him out as soon as he came out. <laughs> Matter of fact, I saw I saw a sign in Dayton said for him not to come back to Dayton. Like, no. Please that don't. Was, yo, that was him. But, uh, <laughs> hey, 
you know, um, uh, so the first one thing I wanted to say and see, it was it was crazy because me and Phil was on a plane um, going to see Tremaine play. And I'm sitting in the row with, uh, you know, we're sitting with um, Garen. And I look at him, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, this dude looks familiar. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I've been a fan of, you know, sports and football and Patriots my life. And uh, and um, then I was like, yo, did you play for someone? And then he told me. Uh, so we were talking over her. So we ended up sitting next to each other, get more, you know, deep in the conversation. But one thing I, I do uh, remember is like your first year uh, was when you went, when you guys went to the Super Bowl, right? Right. Yes. Uh, 80, the uh, Super Bowl 20. Yeah. Right. So that was a, the, amazing to me because like, of course, you're a rookie coming in like, wow, you know, we're, we're winning. Uh, those who know the story know that, you know, uh, I think Tony East, Easton was playing. Right. right. Yeah. Then it flip flop with Grogan, you know, and then um, people still felt that me probably included felt that Grogan should have kept playing. You know what I mean? But yeah. it ended up being um, it ended up being. Uh, uh, Eason, which you always had, the, the, he was the deer in the headlights quarterback. So the crazy thing about it is, um, is so you're playing like this iconic team at the time. I mean, the Bears, man. You know what I mean? And you guys, you had known about their record. They were on this team that they still have one of, I guess, probably considered the greatest defense of all time. You know, one of them, if not, you know, the one. And so. Going to play in that game, like, what was the mindset for you, like, at that point, though? Hey, Shook, I, I tell you what, I, I was like, I was almost like a deer with, in the in headlights myself, because, I mean, here, here I was, you know, and this, this funny story about the Super Bowl is that the previous year, I was a senior at Stanford, and right. the the, uh, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl uh, 19 was played at Stanford Stadium. I don't know if mm -hmm. you remember that. Right. And, um, they it was San Francisco and Miami, mm -hmm. and um, so they were recruiting uh, people to work for the Super Bowl. And I actually got a job. I was standing as a, a security guard on the field, the mm -hmm. Super Bowl nineteen as a security guard along the Miami Dolphin bench. Mm -hmm. And then the that next year, I was playing in the Super Bowl, starting a defensive end uh, you know, against against the the Bears. I mean, it was just. Crazy. Such a freaky thing, you know, and I'm just like, here I am. I'm 22, first mm -hmm. year in the league. I'm playing with Julius Adams. I'm playing with Steve Grogan. Yeah. I'm playing yeah. with Steve Nelson. I'm playing with uh, John Hanna. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, all these guys who've been there for years mm -hmm. and had never been to the Super Bowl. And here I am coming in my very first year and being able to play in the Super Bowl. So, uh, I mean, I, it was a new experience. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even, when we were in New Orleans for the game, uh, I had to hold my whole family down there, and I should have been out partying like yeah. everybody else. But I was just like, going, I was so concentrated in on right. man, I gotta, I gotta do well in the game, and so I didn't really experience the the whole Super Bowl experience like I should have. But uh, I was hoping to get back in uh, another Super Bowl, but uh, that ended up being the only one that I played. <laughs> you, you before your time, I, 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 it's like it's done, it's over. Do you Did think you, uh, going to the Super Bowl in your first season? Um, kind of like messed with your journey as far as like the struggles of a player trying to make it and all that. No, because I, the, you know, when you start the season, you're and especially after being there the first time, you're like going, okay, we've got a good enough team to to get back there again. Right. You know, let's. No, there's no reason we can't get back there, and uh, we had a good season. Uh, the next year, I think we went uh, eleven and five. I think the next year, and uh, we played Denver in the, uh, I think we won the AFC East that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up playing Denver out in Denver. Uh, we lost, I think it was like 22-17. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people forget about that, how well we did that second year after the, the right. first Super Bowl. And, um, but we, Denver got us late in the game. And um, so that was about, as close as I got to Super Bowl again until my last year when I went back out and played for the 49ers uh, in the 92 season. And uh, we lost to uh, Dallas in the yeah. NFC Championship game that year. And, and that was, and that's all she wrote at that point. So the yeah. thing was, is, did you ever, did you get the sack, Jim McMahon, though? 
I didn't uh, didn't sack him, but I sure knocked the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, cool. I, I, he was. I, I wanted to hit him so bad, shit, but I'm hip. Pro- probably probably more than any quarterback because he ran his mouth, you know. And I was yeah. just just uh, you know he he was. Uh, but I tell you what, Jim Man, great competitor and great right. football player. I have nothing against him. It's just like you know when you run your mouth on the field, though, they, you just you want to knock some teeth out. Right. So. And, and, and for me, it was I, I think a question I might have asked was uh, for those who, who might not know, there was a, um, a folklore sort of player, uh, bigger than life type, uh, polarizing player at the time, uh, William Perry, Refrigerator Perry. Um, he was, I mean, he was a fat dude who could move. He was like, he, he, he was he was an athletic fat dude like before Vince Wilfork. I know, about and that, even yeah. more athletic I feel than Vince Wilfork because what he would do, and then he was that first guy when they would do those short yardages and have this dude run the ball and score touchdowns. So yeah. when he um, excuse me, it's all good shit. We got you still. We hear you. When he um, when he was uh, running, like, did you have to even go up against him when he was running? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll lead up, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but that, the year before, um, mm-hmm. we had one of the very first uh, NFL scouting combines out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in uh, 1985, and uh, Refrigerator Perry and myself, and, and I think there's 200 some other players, just like they have the combine today, but um, so we're in line, and we're down to our underwear, we, we have to get weighed on this uh, scale. And um, I'm standing in line. I'm a def- I'm a def- defensive end, and uh, you know uh, I'm weighing. I get on the scale, 255 pounds, and refrigerator. He's he's the next guy up. He gets on there, 360 pounds. Damn. I was like going, damn. So like he, we're playing the same position, and he's right. 100 pounds more than I am. Holy. Uh, but I, I tell you what, I give him credit. He was a hell of an athlete. Uh, he could dunk a basketball. I know. I know. And uh, he was, you watch him play. I mean, he was a damn good football player. And, but we, to get back to the Super Bowl, though, they did give him the ball a couple times. And on one particular play, uh, I came in late and gave him a shot uh, while he was on the ground. He wasn't too happy about it. And mm-hmm. uh, we ended up getting in a little tussle in, uh, mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl. So, uh, right. He got a hold of my face mask, and uh, mm. we're we're tussling around. But um, you know, he was he was a good football player and uh, happy go lucky, and um, mm. you know, he was he was the real deal. There's no question. He gets a lot of, you know, people say he was overweight and everything, but I tell you what, he he could play. You don't, you, don't, I mean, I, you don't see big guys like that anymore in football. Like everyone's lean, everyone's no. big. You rarely see a big old fat guy. Just doesn't. You know. Well, <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? Though on that note, though. There was a period of time, yeah. When see, he was he was an, an anomaly because he he was athletic and could move. But oh, yeah. if you remember at the time there was a time in the NFL where they were using the plugger, like a uh, uh, Ted uh, Hamilton, uh, Ted uh, who's a big dude. Ted uh, played for New York, Washington. Ted, Ted Washington. Washington. Yeah, he was my teammate with the 49ers. Oh, wow. right. And Tony Saragusa, those were some big ass dudes in the middle. <laughs> with, yes. With, when the NFL was like trending to having that big plugger in the middle, you know what I mean? Right. Kind of went away from it. But um, well, the quarter quarterbacks weren't as mobile as they are, you know. Oh like, yeah, you're not, yo, you're not getting them if you were like how those guys were. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you were That's... pretty quick. You were pretty quick off the edge. I mean, the funny thing about me, well, the, the thing about me, so I'm a, I'm a fan of football, of course, uh, sports, but I followed the Patriots for many years. So as a kid, it was uh, Mac Heron, um, Sam Cunningham, you know, and then I started having my affiliation as a teenager. I worked for um, my boss was Houston Antoine, who was yes. a, a, a office lineman. Yes, a big. I, I was like sixteen. He was a big dude, bow legged. I, I heard he could make some barbecue too. Oh yeah, he probably oh, could because he looked like barbecue. But he, <laughs> he, he, he was. I worked for him, and he used to talk. And I used to tell him about my aspirations. And then after him, um, we had a clinic at school where Tim Fox and Mike Haynes came. And then uh, 
years, you know, fast forward a little bit, then I became friends with um, Leon Gray, you know, who used to yeah. frequent Mattapan where I lived. So I was always connected uh, to some guys. Uh, then I think it was a Jarvis uh, a Redmond that also played on the Super Bowl team as a running back. I think he was out of Arizona, which he, oh, he tried uh, to be a Robert, rapper. Robert Weathers? No, no, not I know Robert Weathers. This dude was Redmond, right? Oh, Redmond. Uh, oh, Red yeah, he played on one of the Super Rams. Bowl teams. And he um, he was one of the you know many NFL players that wanted to be a rapper. So I met I met him in the studio a few times. What I'm basically saying, there was every part I was meeting somebody or, or having an affiliation with someone from you know the Patriots. And even right now, uh, Damian Harris, you know we we converse a bit on on, on uh, social media. And I had met met uh, uh, Strakers. It's a place in Boston, Italian. Um, high end place. So yeah. I'm just saying, I've always had this connection. That's why I was like, when I talked to you, when I saw you, people I saw, um, Garen on the plane, probably talked the whole flight because it was like, <laughs> wow, I was immersed in that and plus the hip hop. So, yeah. you know, um, after how long were you, how long were you a Patriot? And then where did you go after that? Yeah, I was there for, for seven years. At, uh, you know, towards the end of uh, my career, I was, I had uh, some knee surgeries. Uh, mm -hmm. torn um, uh, meniscus and, and uh, cartilage. I missed, you know, five games, six games here. And then in 89, I uh, got hit on a goal line play and uh, tore all the ligaments in my knee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, was out. That And that was a game that everybody in New England talks about and knows about. It was the, uh, we played the Green Bay Packers in the uh, mm -hmm. last preseason game of 89. And uh, myself, Andre Tippett and Ronnie LaPette uh, I had season-ending injuries. Mm. Uh, tip, tip tore his um, pectoral muscle mm. uh, off his chest, Ooh. and um, Ronnie Lepet tore his Achilles heel. Oh, mm. and uh, okay, but those are really I, I can I, visualize. Those are bad ones. Ooh. Oh, I mean, it's I. It was the only time. I mean, I I can remember that vividly of you know trying to get up and not having any stability in my knee. And I actually cried on the field because I thought that was the end of my career. Uh, mm. I thought, thought I was done. And uh, but you know through hard work and everything, I was able to come back. But but I I played uh, another three years after that, two with the Patriots, and then my last year, my eighth year, uh, I was part of that. All that you know, we were uh, hadn't didn't have a collective bargaining agreement, and I ended up mm. going to court with about uh, eight nine other guys. Mm. Uh, they had that plan B system at that time. And the thing about it, if, if I had gone for what I was being paid, if I had gone to another team, the team taking me would have had to have given up, I think, two first round choices. Mm -hmm. And for somebody in, uh, that's had surgeries and at my age, you know, to still require two first round picks, there was nobody that was going to uh, allow me to move. So I was kind of stuck with you know, the Patriots because of what they were offering me. And so there were about eight other guys who were in that same position with their teams because of this plan B system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to court and won. And so basically we became free agents for like 10 days. The judge gave us five to 10 days and I ended up signing with San Francisco. And uh, that's, that's why I wanted to stay in New England. There was no mm -hmm. doubt about that, but they weren't going to pay me. Right. What I felt I was worth, and and you know through the through the court systems, I was able to uh, to go and and make a make a you know a good salary that final year. It, it's amazing to me too because you can um, like like you can't remember every player on teams, right? But um, I remember you <clears throat> because you were a good player. So that's what I mean, like the separation of like you were good. I knew that off the edge, you know. That's what I look for anyway, like, you know, yeah. rushing a quarterback and, you know, contain and all that stuff. So I used to watch you and I was like, man, this, like you was really, we all, like, I'm talking about New England, was like Garen Varys, we knew like that this was a good player, even when we lost yeah. you. So, you yeah, know. That's, uh, I mean, coming in my rookie year, I mean, as I said before, I I was new and, you know, I ended up getting 14 sacks my uh, my rookie year. And, yeah. Uh, but, you know, to have Andre Tippett on the other side and, uh <laughs> Don Blackman, uh, who was a hell of a player also for us. Even, uh, Lippet, even Lippet too, right? 
Yeah, Lippitt. We had, you know, Fred Marion, Roland James right. in the back right. backfield. I mean, we, we had a hell of a defense. And, um, you know, 14 sacks my rookie year, and then I think I had 11 or 12 the next year. Mm. Um, you know, it was just fun because we could lay our ears back and go, especially when you had Tippett on the other side. Right. And such a strong inside uh, play for our defense. And, and, you know, Ronnie and Roland and Fred and all mm. those guys shutting them down you know, in the, uh, the receivers, it allow us to get more time and more time for sacks. So it was it was a good time for the Patriots. So uh, as I fast forward a little a little bit now, so we know it was a different time, a different era. You know, um, what do you think about today's game, and 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 how do you you know how do you view that? Well, I, I mean, I, watching the Super Bowl, I mean, I, I thought it was a great Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Um, you know, and I I think it's. It's a great season. I don't think there there's any, you know, true dominance in the NFL. I mean, I, I like that uh, that there there's some, you know, even evenness to the uh, to the league. But uh, I, I thought the two best teams played uh, this year, and it was fun to watch in the great Super Bowl. But I mean, those guys are they're big, they're strong, they're fast. Uh, mm. I mean, it, it's just it's it's fun to watch. But but then again, on the other side, you know, what happened to um, is it uh, Demir or Demar? Demar, Demar yeah. who yeah, yeah. Know, things like that. I mean, you, it just makes you wonder that the guys are getting so big and strong and fast. Are you? Is is this going to happen more often now because of uh, because of that or what? It just it's kind of scary in that pros, prospect. But um, you know, guys are going to continue to play football, and I I think the NFL is conscious of the safety, but uh, you know, it's it's just tough to prevent something like that happening when the guys are so big and so strong and it's a physical and, uh, game. Please look. Arby, yeah. I said it's a very think, physical game. There's gonna be it injuries. Is. It's just what's gonna happen. Well, you think if you think about it too, like so you being a defensive player and a rusher, um so one thing is like me, even me growing up playing football, which was the same era, um the game was, yo, I'm knocking the hell out of it. You know what I'm saying? My, I'm gonna like when I get this quarterback, I'm gonna body slam. I'm doing whatever. So now, you know, and that was it. And then sometimes I even speared. That's the type, that's where I came from. So I cracked right between the ribs, boom, or the chest. Didn't matter. Explode him, <laughs> blow him out. I remember one. Damn, I I, I, wanted, I didn't want to play against Big Shug then. Man. No, no. <laughs> you took it to the level. Hey, one football player said that. Uh, one NFL player, I can't remember who, he said that they used to call um, they used to call certain quarterbacks candles, right? And then uh, because one blow and they were out, like done. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, damn. So I and, I and I knew that's what you were trying to do. Now I watch the game and I see guys get there and pull both their hands back, try to roll over without touch. It's crazy. Like yeah. I, they, I know they're protecting the quarterback. But man, that part right there sometimes is so iffy. And yeah. what do you feel about them calls and stuff like well, that? Well, it, it, I mean, it definitely it, it it's on a pass rusher's mind because if you're close, you know, before you could just you know take them out uh, mm -hmm. with no problem. But now, you know, the guys have to worry about getting flags, and if they, you know, just mm -hmm. as you said, just blow on them, they might fall over or, right, or look, right. look at the ref and the flag. You know, the flag comes out, but. Um, you know, but it's like anything, you have to adjust to it. I and mean, that's that's the game. You have to adjust. It's a different game from when I played. And, um, you know, it's, I think, I don't know. I don't like it because, you know, here you are, you're favoring, and it's always been a quarterbacks, you know, they're making right. big money. They're they're going to protect that. That's what the NFL product is. It's scoring touchdowns. It's mm -hmm. scoring. And that's, that's the, mo that's the, the framework of the NFL and they're going to, they're going to protect that. And the players mm -hmm. just have to, and coaches have to make the adjustments. So um, that's really what it comes down to. How, how do you feel about, okay, so now how do you feel about the advancement and the fact that I want to say, you know, uh, black quarterbacks, um, excuse me, uh, black quarterbacks being at the forefront. Yeah. And, but it's also to me it's a it's it's two things because it's black quarterbacks yeah but they they're more athletic the quarterbacks that we see they run around which was um <clears throat> when you were playing obviously that was taboo if you right. was that you was going to be a defensive back 
you were gonna be like, what the hell are you doing? Stay in that pocket. You know what I mean? So, and and now it's changed to like, like I feel like we were talking about, you just said there's no dominant team, but <clears throat> I felt like Philly did kind of dominate, but yes. I feel like it was very thin line between Cincinnati being at the Super Bowl again with yes. on that side in the AFC. So as far as like just speaking on the uh, black quarterback and things like that, like what do you feel about that now? Because when you played, obviously that was, I mean, was he, was Cunningham playing when you were playing? Well, that's, I was just getting ready to say, because uh, yeah. Randall, Randall and I came out the same year in 85. Okay. Okay. So I, I played with Randall. We were in the um, Shrine Bowl out at Stanford uh, in 85. And I mean, he was at UNLV. And I mean, you could tell he was going to be a, a good quarterback. But Basically. because of his style, you know, you just wondered, you know, the, the NFL had, I think I saw a fact. I don't think every NFL had had a black quarterback until I think 2000, I want to say 18 mm -hmm. or 16. Mm -hmm. So I think the last team that had started a black quarterback was about 2018. And I, I think I remember them saying it was like a Geno um, uh, Smith at, 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 with the Jets. I think that mm -hmm. was uh, the Jets were the last team to have a black starting black quarterback. Right, and, right. Uh, but you think about, you know, from 1968, I think Marlon mm -hmm. Briscoe was the first black quarterback to, to be a starter in the National Football League. So it took from 1968 to mm -hmm. 2016, 17, 18, somewhere around there for every team to have, you know, a black starting quarterback. And it, well, it, was, it was a long progression to get there. I mean, there were some great quarterbacks before that. But, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like the, the norm uh, like it is now. It's a, it's a different game. That's why when, when they said two starting uh, black quarterbacks, I was like, well, man, every team damn it has them. And then you talked about Marlon Briscoe starting. But the first guy who who really started a, a season on with regularity was James Harris. Uh, yes. You know, he, he didn't have any outlandish stats or anything, but he was – a starter, you know, and he came from um, uh, Grambling, you know, yes. uh, with great, great Eddie Robinson, rest in peace. <laughs> um, the thing with me is, is just watching that and the, the evolution of it and how, um, like I said, it was taboo before, but how great it is now because um, <laughs> if you think about it, Doug Flutie, Doug, Doug Flutie was a black quarterback. No, what I, what I mean, <laughs> what I mean is, I mean, if you think that's what I'm, I'm how I'm paralleling it. Because the, the, way, he short. Was, the way he played, he was yeah. short, he was athletic and could run, and he could throw. And they didn't want that yet. You know what I mean? They didn't, they, and, but that's what these that's what I, quarterbacks would do. That's what I was saying last week about uh, uh, Tommy Frazier. Yeah, yeah, yeah with well, Tommy from, Frazier. Uh, Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. He was, but I'm saying Doug Flutie. If they didn't want him, you know what I mean? Just because, and right. he did what these quarterbacks are doing now. You know right. what I mean? But before, when I say it, it's black quarterbacks, because a lot of them are playing this style. But I also, when I first went to see, uh, first time I went to see everybody black on a team was when I, I lived in Atlanta in the early, uh, uh, in the, I guess mid 80s, somewhere around the early 80s, where I first went to Morris Browns and Morehouse games and all that and I was like damn like black punters receivers you know deep, everybody quarterbacks that were in the pocket you know yes. I was like this is my first time seeing that stuff so it's just to me it's come a long way and then you know I like it myself I was just what year was that tape. huh what year was that that you're talking when about? I was out in, that, yeah, yeah. in Atlanta yeah yeah like 83 82 okay probably 83 or so yeah 82 something like that you know but I mean that was my first time seeing like all of that, you know. Yeah. And now this where it's come, it's just a great thing. Um, got a Super Bowl. question. Oh, I got a Super Bowl question since we, we have a guy who's in the Super Bowl. How, how did you like? <laughs> how did you like the halftime show? Um, the Rihanna show. Did you like it or did you not like it? I liked it myself. I liked I, it. I mean, I, I, um, I was uh, traveling. I was coming. I went to Huntsville, Alabama, this past weekend, and I was driving back. My uh, niece plays volleyball. She does uh, travel volleyball, so uh, we. I drove down to uh, Huntsville, about seven and eight hours uh, on the road, and didn't get to see the halftime performance. And oh, I got shit. back 
uh, I, and I was hearing people's comments on it, you know, they were just all these, you know, uh, social media saying just dogging her and yeah. saying it was bad and that all this good. stuff, you know, and I'm, I'm expecting, you know, just a terrible show when I finally did watch it after the fact. And I was like, man, that, that's, I mean, she was, I mean, her, all the songs that she has yeah. is just simply amazing. Yeah, she's good. And, My hand and, just stood up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, she's just, she's a superstar. And I, I think it's just people hating. Um, and uh, it, it's unfounded. I, I just, I thought I liked it. So the, the next one is more game related. I just wanted to talk about that because we're like a hip hop podcast. We can bring it up. But the um, did you think there was any controversial calls? You know, because I just wanted to talk about the two things people were complaining about, and those were the yeah. Two I mean, it's it, people got to realize there there are calls like that every damn game that uh, that's played in the NFL. Yep, and mm-hmm. uh, and they should have been more, more worried about the field. I hear the field was <laughs> yeah. just uh, terrible. It was uh, slipping like crazy. Yeah, it was terrible slipping. condition. I mean that that the NFL should be ashamed of that and how they allow. You know, field to be that way, and I'm I'm surprised that uh, the coaches are you know didn't they don't test that field out before they play on it. I forget which what, team one one team was prepared for it and brought other cleats. I think it might have been the Eagles. They had yeah, they I, brought an extra uh, the, uh, throughout the game. You kept seeing piles of cleats on their sideline because they yeah. they had played there earlier in the season and and um, it, it looked like it looked like they were slipping the most of them. Yeah, that's. <laughs> It might have been the other yeah, team, but one of the teams was prepared for it and brought extra extra cleats. This still didn't help them out. It looks like that they're they're playing on, not ice, but like oil or something. It was crazy. Yeah, I mean it, it was it looked bad. I mean I I just um, it's it's hard to believe that they would have a field like that in such a you know, big game like that. Have you ever seen a, in the, in all your years? Have you ever seen someone purposely not score a touchdown in the Super Bowl? <laughs> Yeah, that uh, I think it was what the, the too. Patriots, the Patriots, uh, yeah. uh, Seattle game. Oh, I saw okay. it. Uh, that they just sat down, you know, and right before the, the goal right. line because they want the, the, the clock to run out. Okay. Yeah, because you know the thing about that too, DL is um, is it became you know at one time football, was, as we all know, it was a lot more like brute to it. So it's a lot more like I'm scoring as many touchdowns as I can. I'm gonna take off in as many heads I can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is what it was, and now it's a more more thinking. Have you seen when guy the dude went down and slid? Um, oh, he didn't he was mad that he didn't go down earlier. He almost right. went into the yeah. end zone. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey was pointing to his head like, "Think, think." See, so yeah. that you know, back in the day, we we were football players. They were like, "You didn't think." You know, they they look, said, <laughs> they're looking for somebody to hit as they go into the end zone. No question. You know? Oh, I could get it easy. I mean, you know. One of the biggest things for me too, was, and I feel was the difference of the game, it wasn't um, the fumble to me, forget that. It was, how do you have two plays, excuse me, where receivers are wide open like that? Right. Those are two touchdowns, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were wide open, no one was even cleared next to them. Yeah. This right. is a Super Bowl, like that yes. was amazing. And then I heard their defensive coordinator got a job on another team as a coach. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. That's yeah, sad. yeah. That's and that's the thing about it. I, I mean, uh, Kansas City obviously saw something that, and I heard uh, Mahomes talk about it. Said, you know, we felt that uh, we had the right play call because they they were looking to mix them up on those uh, particular plays and whatever they saw about you know how the defensive backs would react to this particular formation. Uh, they felt that that's what was going to happen, and it sure enough, hell happened because uh, they were both wide open. That's that's our coach right there. Yeah. So, oh yeah. I, I've never. I played high in high school. I didn't see shit that that was that wide open. <laughs> <laughs> it was just amazing, you know. But um, a question I got uh, f- football before we like talk a little bit of a uh, hip hop shop. Um, so defensive, you played defense, so um. Who would you who would you say are your uh, top five defensive players in the history of the NFL? Players, uh, yeah. Uh, top five defensive players that I've that I've seen or played against. Uh, well, I mean, as far as playing with on the same field, uh, I think two of the best linebackers ever play, and and Tip does not get the credit that he deserves, but Andre Tippett and uh, uh, Lawrence Taylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, I, I think we're in the, the same class, but they uh, were. Mean Joe Green, mm. uh, to me, one mm. of the uh, the best. Uh, uh, Reggie White was slapping mm. people around. Uh, right. right. Incredibly. <laughs> right. Um, and on, let's see, defensive back wise, I mean, prime time was, yeah. was uh, I one mean, just, just one of the best. And, um, Let's see, if I could give you one more, who would I say? I'd have to say Ray Lewis in the middle. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, we, so, the yeah, crazy thing about it is, I, I know I like Mike, too. Yeah. Singletary with the eyes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mike was, he was ferocious. But, you know, yeah. it's crazy that Joe Green, because growing up, uh, the time we did, um, so even though I was always a Patriots fan, but I was also a fan of uh, the Steelers. You know, and, and the players and all, and, and rest in peace to the great Franco Harris, who recently passed. But um, Mean Joe Green used to play, and I remember that he would swear and threaten the players in front of him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to. And I was like, oh, shit. So I learned this. That was my team. So I yeah. learned. So that's what I did through my high school career. That was me all day. All right. I was saying the craziest, what well, had you in the head. Before I even came off, I was in the backfield before. But I just remember learning that when I heard that from um, uh, uh, me and Joe Green. I was yeah. like, oh. So I, so that made me be a player who was like, not only was I going to be, you know, physically prepared in the weight room and all that stuff. I was I was mm-hmm. talking and getting in it. So, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, a- mean, mean Joe was, uh, I mean, I, I remember seeing, you know, that uh, was it football for life they have on the NFL right. uh, channel that uh, they had with Mean Joe. And I guess, you know, I don't know if it was after his first or second year with Pittsburgh. And he actually left camp, uh, said he didn't he wasn't going to play anymore because it just wasn't working. And they had to convince him to come back and and uh, and play. So uh, it's just amazing that, you know, he was willing to almost on the verge of, you know, just leaving Even football early. Yeah. But uh, they came back, and that you know, after that, you know what they did from '75 to '78. I think they won three of four Super Bowls. So it was, it was amazing. We well, still know who those players were. I just thought of something. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Were you on Family Guy? Oh man! <laughs> how how, how do you know that? I, I, He's I want, quick with that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm you on Family Guy, right? Yeah. How do you know that? Cause, cause, <laughs> I won. I won. <laughs> he, he's quick with the fake. He he's quick with the finger. He's quick like that. Well, well, if you if you run into any of the uh, TV execs, yeah, I'm I'm looking for my payday because they use my <laughs> name on Family that Guy. That was it was your name. I knew I, you played Bo Jackson in, in Tecmo Bowl or something like that. Yeah, I'm I'm chasing Bo Jackson all over the damn field and I can't catch him on the Tecmo Bowl. On, okay, uh, I just thought that just popped the, into my head. That was weird. Yeah, uh, that's, did you ever play, have any stories about Bo Jackson or you play against him? Well, we played against him one uh, one year, and uh, I mean, it, the guy. I still feel that if he would have played his whole career, I think he would have been the best yeah. running back. <laughs> yeah, game. yeah. I think he's like the best athlete that ever lived, probably yeah. natural athlete. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, I football, mean, what he did on the baseball field is incredible. Football, it's, un- it's insane. Crazy. They're saying to be an all-star crazy. player in two professional sports. It's wild. Yeah. Well, I I feel like Bo. I feel like Bo would have been probably the greatest at running back. But it's still always um, – I still feel like the all-time leading rusher, if he didn't walk around, right, walk away right now, would be Barry Sanders. Yeah. You know, Bar- Barry Sanders, who, who has a better mix – who has a better highlight tape than that dude? Yeah, you know? that's that, – Barry's the only guy I've ever seen. Oh, that, Jackson? I swear, he's running <laughs> forward. It seemed like he could just, like, magically jump backwards. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's crazy, the stuff. Let me mean. tell you. DL. No, I know, I know Barry. I, to number two, I, I know Barry Sanders. I, I was just, Let me I was just teasing him. So I was just recently watching because they, they, it pops up on social media and it'd be like Barry, Barry, what? Uh, excuse me, Barry Sanders was putting r- players in a blender, right? <laughs> and then it shows him against the Patriots that whatever year that game was, and this dude is literally stopping on dimes. Guys are spinning around like you're spinning. You know, in defense, like don't ever spin around. Like these dudes are spinning. And this dude is is doing things, and then he's out for like yeah. six years. Amazing man, <laughs> amazing guy. Man. Before and then, we and then and then then you have another guy on the other end of it that just ran people over and then ran ran away from them. 
who I think I, as a kid, I was just admired and just like, man, so I, he's the only player I'd say, damn, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to get hit by him. The buzz. Uh, Earl Campbell. Oh, just, <laughs> Earl. 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 No, listen, let me tell you, Earl, first of all, he had 30 something inch thighs or something, right? <laughs> they, it was like, they were ridiculous. And what? he, he what was he did fast to... and powerful. I'm that jealous. Yeah. <laughs> well, what... <laughs> <laughs> what he did well, to uh, Isaiah Robertson, uh, of the Rams, that famous hit. Oh, oh, he put his head into his chest oh, and knocked oh. him back and then kept going. Oh, my God. His career was probably over. Yo, that was, if, I mean, that, that play has been played. I don't know. That's got to be a world record because that that was the NFL and Earl just just demolished the linebacker. And, and people didn't want to tackle Earl. And Earl, oh, Earl was, he was this little, he was like a, um, a smaller version was like a Robert Newhouse. These dudes were built like little, like like yeah. truck. But he there, was there's and there's powerful. nobody, yeah, nobody like Earl Campbell that's ever played the game. Hmm. Nah, nah, you know, and Earl, and he had the Skull commercials and all that. Yeah. That's the thing. Was, Skull, it, brother. It, huh. it fit him. It, it, it fit him. You know, it fit him. It, it was perfect. Before we As get we, uh, before we get into music, Chef Tanya, what, what did you want to ask about the fo- football? You had a question. Oh, I just wanted to know if, you know, during the, the time that you played, you guys talked a lot of trash talk on the field. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a lot of lot of stuff talked out there and still to this day. I mean, it, it just, it, it happens. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, we keep it on keep it on the field most of the times. I mean, there's there's of definitely course. some personal things off the field that between guys that, that uh, you know, elevates things. But, uh, uh I can still remember, uh, you know, many conversations and uh, Dan Marino. I remember him. He would cuss his even even his own offensive lineman out for allowing us to hit him and stuff like that. But uh, it uh, it was always fun. It it just raised the level of the game, and the more talk there was, the more hitting that was going on. That's for sure. What about the other? And I tell you, what, one thing you have to remember too is as you look around the entire field, every man out here playing this. Oh, we lost Big Sug. All right, what was the other thing you were asking? Me? Oh, I wanted to ask you, like, what was your favorite stadium to to play in? Favorite stadium? Uh, I would probably say Miami. Uh, Miami's new stadium uh, was was a nice stadium to play in, and I always loved going down to uh, New York to play the Jets because the the Jet fans were just nasty as hell, and uh, we I think we had a pretty good record with against them down there. But uh, that was always a fun stadium to go to. New, the Jets fans always, they would throw hot dogs at you and who knows what <laughs> else at you. Uh, it, was, it was nasty. Throwing good food away. Did you have yeah, a Yeah, I said, well, we'd, we'd turn around and eat it. So <laughs> that's, uh, thank you. <laughs> Did you ever have any like crazy fan moments where, you know? Uh, not me personally. I know we when we would go on the road, uh, I know that there was this one woman who, who she would be at the hotel uh, door waiting for the bus to come, and she was a big Tony Eason fan. And uh, we'd always used to laugh. This be the first thing we'd look for when we got to the hotel. There she is, Tony. There she is. It's and, like you uh, knew you were home if she was there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was. There's always you know some crazy stories of on the course. road trips, and that's the that's the probably the thing I miss the most about uh, playing is. The, uh, the fun that we had together, the uh, Monday night uh, chicken wing and beers at, and tequila that we would have nice. at uh, local um, uh, restaurant and bar there right next to the stadium called the Eagle Brook. Shout out to the Eagle Brook. Uh, we I think we yeah. spent, millions, it seems like millions of dollars. And <laughs> we did a lot of, lot, lot of chicken wings and a lot of tequila and a lot of Two beer. Two of my things. favorite things. There you go. <laughs> There you go. We gotta go try it out. So we lost Big Shug, but I think he's gonna be si- signing back in here in a moment. But Big Shug told me you're, you're a big, um, you're a big hip hop fan. Oh my gosh! I, I tell you what, I, it's like when I uh, I left Ohio, I didn't know a whole lot about hip hop. And when I when I went to Stanford and um, about in when I went out in the early '80s, and uh, hip hop was even in high school. I mean, the first. Song, of course, is the Sugar Hill Gang, where oh, geez. Uh, oh, yeah. 
I mean, just that's that's when I've really, you know, first started. And, you know, once I started late, even before Sugar Hill, of all the uh, the um, DJs and MCs that were, you know, coming out of New York where it originally started, uh, you know, over the years, I've just learned the history. And I, on, I was just watching last night on PBS, they have the uh, three-part series on uh, hip-hop. I don't know if you, have you seen seen that. Or heard of it? Um, I heard of it. I haven't seen. I haven't. I have not, I have not seen it yet. But um, yeah, they're doing a really good job on the history. Uh, those and, documentaries uh, are so addicting. There's one on organized noise from Atlanta that's like it's like life changing. <laughs> the documentary <laughs> documentary is so good. Um, did yeah. you see the uh, Did you see the Billboard Top 50 rapper list? The I've seen a few of them. I haven't seen the latest one. That they, uh, yeah, they just put one out this week. They had. Uh, you know, they had Jay-Z at number one and Rick Ross at number 50 and then a whole bunch of people, you know, in between. But they, they had some, uh, you know, they had some good people on there. Um, yeah, I... No one I was I, really I remember when I, yeah, when I... Yeah, when I met Shug on the plane, I mean, when I heard that um, he was with uh, uh, Guru and and uh, out of Boston, I mean, I just... I, it was it was crazy. I was just... I, that's what I wanted to talk about was music and... Uh, him being in the music business and and uh, you know his thoughts of the the whole industry and where hip hop was going and and uh, it, it's just it's amazing where it started and where it is today. Yeah, it, it, <clears throat> it's really good. We're just sending we're sending him back the information. I don't, I don't yeah, I don't mean to be rude. I'm trying to put it in here. Yeah, yeah. He's just she's just uh, I don't know. He got kicked out somehow. But it's all good. He's coming right back. Um, Oh, he's texting me right now. Okay, I just sent it to him. So yeah, it was um, you know, like that was cool when you said you were born in Columbus or you're from the Columbus area. That's kind of cool. Um, did you see all that stuff that's going on out there? What, what, what you're you're right near it? All that stuff with the train or whatever? We're not really. Well, it's uh, it's near the uh, Pennsylvania border, east. I think it's East Palestine. East. Oh, okay. Um, is where know. the uh, the train derailed. But they're talking about you know the the fumes and things that. Uh, that may be, you know, contaminated. People had issues with their eyes, uh, pets and animals dying, Terrible. and um, people with sore throats, and uh, just who knows what. Yeah, who what knows the, what's and real. the government? The government really hasn't come out with, you know, how dangerous these fumes are or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, we haven't had. I don't think it's blown this way. I think it's more blowing east and. Um, because we, we see it on the you know we see it all mostly on social media so you never know what's real and what's fake you know? yeah yeah so. it's it is uh it's it's a mess i mean i think it, the whole thing is people haven't been allowed to go back and to well they i think they are back in their homes now but they're just worried about water being contaminated the waterways and everything else uh you know what it could do to um you know in the Test future Right. People who may, you know, women may be pregnant. Is it going to affect uh, pregnancies or anything like that? So hope not. Hope not. Right. Um, this is a question that Big Shug likes to ask all the guests. He's, he said he keeps saying he's trying to get in here, but um, we'd like to know you. He said, "Oh, there he is, right here." I see him. You just got to accept him in. So I'll let I'll let him ask you because he's back. That was just a little technical difficulty we had, but at least we got to know about uh, what's going on in, uh, over there. Um, yeah, right now, hearts and prayers to us, everybody oh, yeah. involved. And he's back. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Big sure you just have to unmute yourself. We we can't hear you. Yeah, we good. There you go. All right. Welcome hey, back. Let's... It's time How for your you question, Big Show. Huh? It's time for your question. Oh, no, no. I got one more before we get to that. Oh, oh okay, cool. Oh, yeah. So, listen. As you know, we talked a lot about football and what have you. But, um, you know, Garen Varish, I know from meeting you that you're also a hip-hop fan. You were rock, rocking with us in the 90s and what have you. Oh, man. Um, do, you, do you listen to hip-hop or are you, you know? I do. I, I don't listen as much as the... I'm, I'm on Sirius XM. I rock the bells is on my... Oh, yeah. uh, of course. Sirius... <laughs> station that i i listen to and and shook when i when i met you i was so excited and you told me you were with um uh had been with guru and uh mm-hmm. gangstar and i mean it just that was a time when I, when I came back to boston that was in 85 
that's when right. it was really, I had bought a place in the north end of Boston. I had this nice place on the water. I had this, a stereo mm. and I was buying CDs down at Tower Record on Newberry Street and Mass yeah, Ave. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> I, I lived I lived in that Tower Record probably every, like in the off season, I was on there and there like Saturdays and Sundays, every, about three or four hours a day looking for new music and uh, the latest hip hop at that time. But that was when I was in my you know prime of listening and um, just a wide range of you know what I what I like. And uh, I was saying earlier when you were away that uh, they have that special on PBS right now about the the history of uh, hip hop and you know from the earliest times uh, uh, Melly Mel and Sugar Hill Gang yeah. and yeah. Um, uh, I mean it just and I I remember you going down to New York at that time, taking the train down and hitting the, some of the clubs when, you know, hip hop right. was really big. I did, I was wanted to ask you, you remember a club called Nell's? Yeah, listen. In, in, so, <laughs> so Nell's, so me and, Guru, me and Guru used to feel like Nell's was, uh, well, even me more, cause I, you know, coming from the street th side of things, I always yeah. felt this club was like super soft, right? Like, like I just felt like, Everybody in here is soft, not, like you yeah. know what I mean. I just looked at it, but it was a chill ass club. That's really what it was. That yeah. might have been a little more you uh, exuberance from on my side, just being a little, you know, yeah. I'm big chill, whatever. But so that was the same club, you know, where, where Tupac uh, infamously um, was in the center of the floor um, having a, a woman was performing oral sex on him. Right. That happened in Nels. So me and Guru were there that night. So I'll never forget Nels because me and Guru were there that night. We like, what's all this commotion? And then it's Tupac and the, you know, so I I mean I witnessed all that. So wow. yeah. So yeah, Nels I'm, Nels was a different kind of spot though, but you yeah, know. That's that's wild. Yeah, and I, I mean it's just I mean, I used to I mean I've got all the you know, hip hop from that time. Right. I actually sold a bunch of my CDs and I I recorded a lot of the the music, so I've got it in my files, but uh as I said, I, I listen to every day. My station stays on uh, Rock the Bells and listen listen to as much as I can. And uh, it's been a big part of who I am for a long, long time. So the other day, uh, just recently, uh, we'll probably touch on this later in the show anyway, but we just uh, lost uh, Dave True Goy, the dub from uh, De La Soul. I saw and, that. And you, I seen you respond to that, you know, you was just listening the other day. And um, it was it was just musics like that too, where like like they were so different. Yeah. But it, it was it was funky though. It was you know it, it, it still had its place. Yeah. But they went they went against what was the norm, you know. But it it, it to me it had that impact, you know. And I just when you had uh, said that, I know like listening at that time, I don't care. You could have been listening to the hardest of hard or whatever you was listening to, but you was also listening to Day La Soul as well. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Um, but I got another question before we let you leave. <laughs> I'd like to know 10 of your favorite MCs. So just take, give us 10 of your favorite MCs. Oh my goodness. Rappers. From that, <laughs> that, that whatever. You know, you know, and I, and I thought, I thought about this. I'm like, and I was like going, I'm going to come in and say, like, think about this before I got on. That's So I'm going to give you a list that, that some of my favorites here. I'm, I'm going to go probably beyond 10. So I'm sorry. I got to. No, okay. So so here's Grandmaster Flash, Eric mm -hmm. B. and Rakim. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Sugar Hill Gang. I, Slick Rick. BDP. Mm -hmm. Big Whoa. Daddy Kane. Mm -hmm. Curtis Blow. Uh, Schooly D. Mm -hmm. I mean, that song, the song, What Does It Mean? I mean, to me, that, I don't know. That was just, it, something hit me with that. But uh, nah, nah. Beastie Boys, Ultra Magnetic MCs, oh, nice. um, CL Smooth, mm -hmm. EPMD, of course, Stetson Sonic, wow. MC Light, NWA, The Doc, The oh. DOC, The DOC, yeah. he, The DOC he was, in, Cal in California. I mean, that was, that was different from, from the new from the new york scene i just something he, about the doc and the, their beats i mean it was amazing he has uh, a new song he has a new song with dr dre that came out it was released solely through grand theft auto online remember six dr dre songs came out and they were released through the grand theft auto game you can find it on youtube but 
That's where yeah. they're like from. You know what I'm saying? And DOC does the hook on, on one of the songs and it sounds crazy. It's a really dope song. Wow, yeah, you got his voice. Check that out. <coughs> so, Special Ed, Brand Nubian, Mantronics, uh, Cool Mo D, Heavy D, yeah. Rob Bass, yeah. DJ Easy Rock, Fat Boys. I mean, Fat Boys, nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> First Fat I mean, Boys rap, nice. Absolutely. You was listening. You was I, listening. I, I, I love it all. And, uh, but, but the two, uh, step to the, step to the arena, mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable. And uh, what's what's the other one? That, around 91, 92. Oh. Um, that's early. Um, uh, I just can't. Now, that was the daily operation time. Daily operation. Daily yeah. operation. Oh, that, that was that time. Wow. Double gang star. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, man, we appreciate that, man. Listen, we 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 we. Glad to have that you came through, man. You know, because I like I'm a fan of. Uh, oh, I don't know. Before you go, I don't, like so. What What are you? Um, are you still affiliated with with football in any way, or what, what are you doing as far as that? You know? Well, I, uh, my uh, my job now. I, I'm a fundraiser for. I work for um, a nonprofit, the, the Ohio History Connection. It's a uh, a nonprofit that we. Uh, support all, all the museums around uh, the state of Ohio mm -hmm. and all the historical landmarks and muse uh, buildings and things like that. I work for that organization, but I'm still involved in uh, our NFL players, uh, NFL alumni here in the central Ohio area. We've got so many Ohio State uh, players, professional players who are still in the area. Mm -hmm. So I keep in touch with uh, and all the, the Bengals. Uh, the Players Association down around the Cincinnati area I'm in contact with also. So uh, keep in touch with them because it helps me in my job. But mm -hmm. it, you know, I also go uh, participate in a lot of charitable events, help people raise money and mm -hmm. uh, still still do that. So uh, stay close to the game. It's been a, it's been my life and, and uh, it, it's it just done so much for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I enjoy it. No, that's, that's that's good. Hey, Ta Ta Chef, Chef Tanya Nicole. Yes, sir. Where you at? Yeah. Where you at? I'm here. Hey, Chef, you you you, you miss time. you miss my talk about uh, you're gonna go back have to go back and look at me on the Family Guy. Look me up on Family Guy. Oh, he was oh, here for that. We're gonna, definitely gonna do that. You, um, we, we we are definitely. 100%. I don't know why, man. Like I, I that just popped into my head while you were talking. I, I start. I went somewhere else for a second, and I was like, wait a second. And, and I was like, I, my, my brain is full of useless information. And right now, one, one of them just came, like, played out, played out for me. Well, I need your help, too. You're, you guys are in the entertainment business. I need you to find find uh, how I can get some uh, some money for them using my name like that without my permission. So. Oh, yeah, you definitely got it. Yeah. Hey, is the family guy the one that had um Stu on there, um, DL? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, Stu. Yeah, yeah, Stu, yeah, Stu, yeah, yeah. Stu was my man. He was that baby <laughs> hanging out, right? <laughs> Yo, so listen, Tanya, what's good on the... <laughs> oh, we, please let us know your social media handle so that everyone can see what you're doing, whether it's philanthropy or NFL-related or your nonprofits. Yeah, I'm, I'm on uh, on Facebook at uh, Garen Vera. So you just look me up, and if you want to become friends, see what I'm doing, absolutely uh, hit me up. Uh, LinkedIn, and uh, I swear it's like Google. You just put my name in or the stuff that they know your underwear size, they know your shoes <laughs> size. Trust, they, trust. They, well, then they, I'm definitely gonna look it up. <laughs> everything's up. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I want I want to know where you where those offices are because I got to come visit the office. That's uh, I'm I'm liking this interview. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> hey yeah, we gonna have to come have you come through for part two. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Absolutely. Because we're 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 in lower mass right now. We're in location like I'm out and and she mass right now in in uh, DL and Tanya at the um, basement in the sky over there. <laughs> you know, low the mass, basement you know in the sky. You know what I mean? So I, I, I have to ask, is Tanya married? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not married. Am okay. you, better <laughs> just ask, just ask. you better fill that in. You better fill that in. <laughs> well, I'm not single. She's not no. single. She's not married. We're on air. We're on air. We're an on air, off air couple. All right. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're so a lucky man. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, this thing. Thank you. 
So what you're saying is that their relationship has a lot of air in it. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but um, yo, we well, you know how in radio, you know how in radio, it's a it's a it's a, a staple on radio that the two male and female hosts, you don't know if they're married or not. That that's kind of all across the country in every city. There's those two people that you hear on the radio every morning do the morning show. Like, are they a couple? I don't know. I'm not now sure. Now we're gonna have to I'm edit sure, this you know for the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I said. That's why I said uh, on air, off air, because that's really a thing in radio. That, yeah. that, no, that, you, that you know the what? Pretend to be a couple. So, so years ago, um, uh, Garen, you probably remember a show, uh, The Rockford Files. Yes. Right. So remember, I forget who the woman was, but he used to do Polaroid commercials with this woman. And yes. everybody thought they were married, right? But they 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 had so much good on air chemistry. They were like, really, I forget her name, but I remember yeah, they. I, they, I they can did. picture her, but I can't think of her name too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Gretchen Hoyt was, Corbett. Huh? Gretchen Hoyt Corbett. I, Corbett. Could she, does she have blonde hair? Uh, it's American actress, but I don't know. That's what that's who came up when I. Uh, he used to do. He used to do a bunch of. Yeah, she oh, had blonde, yeah, blonde, blonde yeah, hair. Yeah. He used Legend to do a bunch of, He did a bunch of Polaroid commercials with her, and she was an actress, but they just seemed like Linda Evans. Cool. Huh? Does Linda Evans sound more? It could be her. It could be her. Okay. I think it's her because she was well known too. You know what I mean? Okay. So right. if you had a pitch, I would know. But Garen, we appreciate you coming through. Yeah. It's been great. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and uh, I mean, like, we appreciate you, man. You know, thank you, thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Sugar, it's been uh, too long since we talked. And I know uh, when we sat on the plane, I just right. uh, felt a, a great vibe from you. Just that you were of course. incredible to nice to nice to talk to. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just a pleasure to be on your show and uh, keep doing great things. That's for sure. Yeah. I appreciate you, too. Like uh, when you spoke to my son, like he took a lot out of that. You yes. know, and, that, and that that stuff like that goes a long way too because just uh he was almost he was almost going to what's that what's the HBC out there? Central it's, State? Yeah, yeah. He was he was about to go there. Um he ended up going to now he's at uh Southern Connecticut State University and he's yeah. doing well. But he yeah. was giving to go there. He had took this trip out there. I, I wasn't even thinking that you, like you lived out there. I thought you was down to Cape for some reason. Yeah, I was I was on the Cape. Uh, I moved here three years ago. Oh, see, I had no idea because I probably would have said something like, "If I knew you were there, I didn't." Yeah. I, he was he was like, "Dad, that was kind of far," you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I was <laughs> I was just at uh, Central State uh, last week for a. Uh, they have a national uh, Afro uh, Afro American Museum and uh, Cultural right. Center at Central right. State, and uh, real. A great museum there, and um, just just a great university. So, yeah, we like he didn't he didn't one of the reasons why he didn't choose the school is because they probably had about they probably had about six six coaches in five years, so it was one of them situations where you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's the school's in middle. Uh, did you go out with him or? Nah, he went by oh, himself. It, it's I mean the school is in the middle of nowhere really. I That's mean, what <laughs> really nothing around there but you know it's it's a great school great history there and uh but you know if you want to be out in the cows and the pasture and everything else it's cow like, is all you're gonna get hey, yeah, you <laughs> know, hanging out at the dairy queen because there's hey, nothing you know, going on you know what the funny thing is is when the funny thing is is when uh you know they tell the coaches i don't know because maybe they were their first year or whatever and they tell them do whatever you need to do and then they tell the player <clears throat> yeah, speak to some of the players because now it's a social media thing. And right. then when he spoke to the players, that, that isn't what you want him to do. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> like, they were keeping it. They were saying like you, well, you know, well, yeah. if you don't have no car out here, <clears throat> excuse me, you can forget it. Or if you don't do that, so, they, they must, they need to learn that the recruiting tool is not telling the kids to ask those players. You know Because <laughs> <laughs> they're going to tell yeah. them. You got to, you got to know your people. No question. Thanks again, Garrett, man. Appreciate right. you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Oh, yeah. All right. You guys take care. I enjoyed it. All you right. Too, right. If there's nothing else to do. No, it's that time. It's that time of the week. Man, he, he got uh, he got um he got shocked when I brought up that family guy thing. I don't know what like I like he said something and then I, I, I looked down at uh, uh, up over here at his name 
and my brain just went off in another direction and I was like, yo, this guy was on Family Guy. <laughs> I gotta go watch like, it. Investigate so <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. get my money. I gotta go watch it. You thought you, you thought it was Stu. Yeah. <laughs> um so I remember uh, Stu hung out all night. I uh, was doing coke and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Him and Slain. Him and Slain. Yo, hey, <laughs> hey yo, is that the one with the dog? Yeah, yeah. That's every remember show that has the, a dog. But yeah, Brian the dog, the, the dog talks. It's a New England yeah, show. The they, like, it takes place in Rhode the Island. Dog, the daughter fell in love with the dog, right? <laughs> that shit was one episode. Probably. And then it was it was mad stupid. He was, yo, I can't, you know, we can't do this. It's mad. I don't even watch it, oh, but shit. I just caught that part. Speak, speaking of stupid, who's stupid as hell? Oh, nice <laughs> transition. Yo, that shit. Yo, hold on. Shit, call the trans, we call it a transition. We'll call it a segue. We'll call it just pure stupid. No. <laughs> yo, anyway. <laughs> stupid as hell. This week. Now, even though it's a little old, like maybe a week, but it still was stupid to me because, um, so there was this brother um, from another mother that was with other and got smothered. Nah, that bullshit. Anyway, this is his brother, right? So he plays for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, he just had, he just had came up uh, from the, um, the G League. Um, and they interviewed him. I guess he had a good game. Uh, this one, Brooklyn had defeated Chicago. And when they interviewed him and were on live TV, he says, no homo. Right? No. His name is Cam Thomas, right? Now, anybody in the in the hip hop world or the inner circles, whatever, knows why that said or what you know, when you said it, and we know that can't be blurted out like that. You're on that big scene like that, big stage, and they ask him a question, he gives an answer and says no homo. <laughs> now, he 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 gave an apology afterwards. His name is his name is uh Cam Thomas, Cam Thomas, I know he regretted it. That's one of them things, once it came out, someone probably was like, at first, they're like, well, like a player? Yeah. They're like, oh, shit, you said that? Right, but then when it comes down for social media and everything else, the reason why I'm saying it's stupid is how, because at this time, I don't care who you are or whatever, you need to know that's just, that's, that's, that's just not something you can just throw out and say. You know what I mean? It, it's. It, we know that's hurtful to some people. It's offensive. We know that, but still, you still got to be smart enough to know yeah. that that's it. Just happened. You know what I mean? It's, so it's probably just part of his people, vocabulary, and he just you he know. got bad press training. Yeah. And, yo, this is right after the game, so they got the mic at you, at you and you just say, "Oh yeah, blase, no homo." <laughs> that shit, you know that. Yo, that shit fucking echoed with like you know how the shit is today. That's I yeah. bet the world blase. stop. It went. So, so now you young, Cam Thomas, you young, man. So you got a chance to get up off the stupid list. But this week, man, you stupid as hell. Let's figure it out, man. Let's figure it out, man. And on that Be note, smarter. Be better. it was another good one, man. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Episode 50. Five, six. You know, five, six, talking shit. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know, we here. Appreciate y'all. Remember? Excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. Don't make them. Okay. As we grow, we glow. So let's continue. Listen, hit the like button. You know, tune in. Uh, we got the clip channel. We got, you know, yeah, episodes you might have missed. There's 56 episodes. Think about it. So uh, this, you can go back and look at them and go see stuff and, you know, and, 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 and be brightening and, and brighten and enlighten. Like there's some shit you're going to learn, some shit you're going to laugh at, shit you're going to know, you know, be informed. It is, it is what it is. We got we days, appreciate we got days worth of material to listen to. Yeah. Days worth. If you like this one, you, know, you might like another one. And yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, get the popcorn popping and, and you're good. Pop out. We out. Peace. Oh, yeah. On my dark days. Yeah. On my dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure up. Hard eyes.